In this video, we're going to look into some reversible reactions and then go on to understand the meaning of dynamic equilibrium. Some reactions are irreversible, like burning. If you burn anything, you're never going to get the original material back. So those reactions where the products cannot be converted back into the reactants, those reactions are irreversible. However, in some reactions, you can convert the product back into the reactants, and such reactions are reversible. Now, let's take an example of hydrated copper sulfate. Hydrated copper sulfate formula is CuSO4 dot 5H2O. This dot 5H2O indicates that the compound is hydrated, so the color of this compound, because it's got hydration inside it, this compound will be crystalline. It's a beautiful blue-colored crystal. And when you heat it, if I draw that arrow and I write heat, when you heat it, this compound would literally break down into two components so you would get copper sulfate which is still a solid so that's your solid crystal and you will see water coming out so the water is h2o and if i heat this now i would i might be able to see some hissing and some water vapor coming out but it's difficult to see the steam coming out initially so, but what you would be able to see is the blue color turning into white. And amazingly, it's a beautiful experiment. When you have a crystalline compound and when you heat it, water is removed. And that compound, because it's no longer hydrated, it is now called anhydrous. It's without any hydration. So anhydrous means it doesn't have any water and that also indicates that it's in a powder format. So it's very crumbly, it doesn't have that beautiful crystalline shape. However, if I put a lid on the top, if I put a lid on the top here, the water vapor collects at the top of the lid and the water vapor after some time will drop down into the white, white solid and what you would see is something really remarkable that as soon as the water gets in touch with the white solid, it turns blue. So right now we've got the white powder turning into blue and that means the reverse reaction is happening. So that means I can start with my reactant and the forward reaction gives me the product which was white solid but the white solid can also turn into the reactant. That means now, rather than using a single double-headed arrow, I am using an arrow which now indicates that the reaction is going both ways. Therefore, the reaction is reversible. So this is an example of a reversible reaction whereby the blue solid turns into white. When copper sulfate is heated for some time, the rate in which the blue solid turns into white and the white solid turns into blue, after some time, the rate of both forward and backward reaction will become equal. At that point, you will, if you were observing this practical, for you it would seem as if the amount of color is the same. It doesn't seem that anything is changing but actually, at the microscopic level, the reaction is still going on. And that is the meaning of the word dynamic. So dynamic means that the reaction is still going on. The word equilibrium means that the reaction is happening at the same rate. And the reason why this was happening, as we saw in the previous slide, was because I put a lid on top of the copper sulfate. Therefore, what I had done was I had changed the system into a closed system. 
So system really just means anything that you are observing. So wherever you are carrying out the reaction, be it the test tube, or in that case, an evaporating basin, that becomes your system. Closed is because you put a lid on it. And the lid is important because that uh, without the lid, the product would escape. So what you need to remember here is the meaning of the word equilibrium. Equilibrium, if asked in the exam, you've got to mention equilibrium is established when the rate of forward and backward reaction is happening at the same rate. So that is your first point. And you should also mention that the reaction will occur in a closed system. And automatically dynamic means the reaction is still going on. An example of this is in this particular question, this is a common exam question, particularly at GCSC. So you've got a question where it says cobalt forms colored compounds. A pink cobalt compound reacts with hydrochloric acid. The reaction can be represented as pink cobalt compound plus hydrochloric acid forming a blue cobalt compound plus water. Now notice here, they've not given you any formula here at all. So spend some time decoding the question. We don't have any formula, but what we've got here is that sign. Okay, so straight away, you know that that sign, because it's arrow, half arrows pointing both ways, that is the sign for a reaction which is reversible. So this is a reversible reaction. Now they've given you another information that the forward reaction is endothermic. In this particular video, we will not look into the endothermic side of it. And I will be posting next set of videos where we will look into this particular concept. Now in this particular question, this statement is interesting. When both cobalt compounds are present in a solution at equilibrium, the equilibrium mixture is purple. So we know that the reaction was carried out. That's pink, that's blue. Why did it look purple? So you know that blue and pink, if you mix both together, you will get slightly purple solution. And that's the reason why it looks purple because both reactants and products are being formed at the same rate because the reaction is at equilibrium. Therefore, it will start to look purple. So what is meant by the word equilibrium? So take some time to think about this and pause your video and then come back and we can discuss the answers. Okay, so I hope you've paused the video and had a time to think. When you start writing an answer, you must look at the number of marks that are allocated. There are two marks allocated, so you've got to write down two points for this particular answer. So what is meant by the term equilibrium? We talked about that equilibrium is established when, so equilibrium is established when the rate of forward reaction is equal to is equal to the rate of rate of the backward reaction so the rate of forward reaction is equal to the rate of backward reaction as soon as you mention that you've got one point done so you've talked about the first point where the rate of the forward reaction is equal to rate of the backward reaction. Now you've got to think, what is the second point that I have to make? Do I talk about the word dynamic here? Do I say that the reaction is still going on? But when you look at it, they've not mentioned that you've got to explain the meaning of the word dynamic. So I wouldn't go to that extent here, but still I've got to explain the second point. So the second point that you're gonna make here is all about that what is the condition needed for the rate of forward reaction to become equal to the rate of backward reaction? There is one very important point here, and that point is the reason why I had to put the lid on copper sulfate. The reason why we had to put the lid on the copper sulfate was to prevent water from escaping. 
that means I wanted the system to be a closed system. So these are the two points that you would need to include in your answer whenever a question is asked about what is meant by the term equilibrium. So I hope this video has been useful. In the next set of videos, we'll look into dynamic equilibrium and how you can change the position of equilibrium based on the Le Chatelet principle. So thank you for watching.